Well, this was probably the most vicious partisan State of the Union address that we've ever had in the history of our country. I, I really hope it doesn't set the tone for the future because this was really like being in a Democrat campaign rally. The president threw out all sorts of left-wing tropes. And really, you know, the stuff he was talking about doing, raising taxes, banning guns, taking away our freedoms, uh, you know, that's the kind of stuff that you'd hear at a campaign rally. But as has been demonstrated by his past three years of failed policies, he's not been able to get anything that he wants to get passed because uh, it's so far left of where the country is. And he didn't address the things that people really care about, like how are you going to secure the southern border or what about like all this inflation because he just kind of wrote that off. But, you know, people still don't feel good about going to the grocery store or filling up their car with gas. And maybe it's because Joe Biden is out of touch and doesn't really do those things that he didn't address them. President touted Bidenomics uh, and that more fair share rhetoric. Uh, he also made some claims about cutting the deficit by a trillion dollars. Now, you were in business before you went into government. What's your counter to his claim uh, of this being the, the strongest economy that we've had in years? Well, I don't know what la-la land Biden's living in, but he didn't cut a trillion dollars out of the deficit. We've seen our deficit go to $34 trillion now is what we have in debt. That's two, over $260,000 for every household. It's like a second mortgage on every American family. And if you look over the last four years, spending just in the discretionary part of the budget, you know, this is just our agencies, running our agencies, it's up 40% over four years. That's crazy. When I was governor of Nebraska, we kept it to less than 3% a year. So the Biden, the Biden administration and Joe Biden in particular is just detached from reality, you know, promising he's going to uh, restore Roe versus Wade again. What world is he living on that he's going to be able to get that done? He's going to he wants to raise everybody's taxes. Yeah. Well, you, remember, Republicans control the House and you got to work with the Senate. You know, this was a kind of a campaign speech. It was not a speech that was actually designed to show a bigger unity platform or show the world that we're united mm -hmm. or even to have anything that he can think he can get past. Senator, uh, moving to foreign policy, you were on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. The president led his speech, blasting Republicans for essentially siding with Vladimir Putin as he called for more aid to Ukraine. Uh, isn't this a war that Joe Biden could have prevented? So why is he up there now finger finger wagging at Republicans over this issue? Well, I think it's pretty much common knowledge that his weakness in Afghanistan and the rapid pullout really sent a signal to Putin that he could invade Ukraine. And so I think it was his projection of weakness that has actually emboldened Putin to do things like take the steps in Ukraine he's doing. And frankly, it's so, again, out of touch with the American people. The American people want to know, what are you going to do about our borders? What about the southern border where we have had 9 million people either in the last three years get into our country or try to get into our country? That's larger than the city of New York trying to get into our country. Right. And Biden's done nothing about it. He has all the same tools Trump did to secure the border. Mm -hmm. Trump brought it to a 45-year low. Biden's allowed open borders. That's what the American people care about. Yeah. Starting off with Ukraine, just tone deaf. Yeah, it, you know, and he, he saved, he, it took him 40 minutes to get to the border, even though that's consistently one of the top, uh, top two issues that are really driving voters right now. Uh, in his address, Senator, the president announced that the United States military will help build and establish a port for humanitarian aid into Gaza. Watch this, sir. Tonight, I'm directing the U.S. military to lead an emergency mission to establish a temporary pier in the Mediterranean on the coast of Gaza that can receive large shipments carrying food, water, medicine, and temporary shelters. No U.S. boots will be on the ground. I don't know how those two things happen. Uh, you know, do you believe that this move is going to plant a target on the back of U.S. forces or further strain relations between the United States and Israel? Well, Hamas, who started this war, is a terrorist organization. If there are Americans in the vicinity, you can be sure they're going to try to attack them. I mean, again, this is just so foolish to say you're going to build a port, but no American boots are going to be on the ground. Again, what la-la land is he living in that somehow this is going to magically appear? It is really just, again, part of his detached from reality attitude about how the world works. Uh, you know what? Israel needs to be able to 
destroy this terrorist organization. And frankly, one of the things we've been doing under Joe Biden is funding the United Nations Works and Relief Agency for Palestine, which is a front for the Hamas organization. They hire Hamas agents. Uh, they've been used their sites to attack Israel. And my concern is that the aid that we're providing here will go just to continue to support Hamas as they fight against Israel. I mean, this is a terrorist organization. We should not be supporting it.